but please don't forget that you can also keep up to date on alternative breaking news by visiting Get In It For Truth's Twitter feed, or blog. We blog and tweet nearly 24 hours a day, and our Twitter feed is up to date, and at almost all times it is full up with breaking news stories that have literally just been published on the intranets, and a lot of them not even yet tweeted, but surely enough time to study and see that there is something interesting amid the information to merit further discussion and research. We try to keep connected, so that we can help others keep connected. But we usually only produce news that is keeping in mind with truth seekers, and those wanting to help come along with us and discover some semblance of reality beneath all the lies been fed us. So, if breaking alternative news is your thing, and deciphering it all is a passion of yours, come along with us, and let's see how much we can help everyone. Without further ado, on to the news. In Aspen. The city's geothermal test drilling well broke ground this week, filling the small parking lot beside the Proctor open space with industrial trucks, a hard-hatted drilling crew, a water tanker and a two-story diesel-powered air drill steadily boring through boulders. City officials are crossing their fingers that the project will prove their suspicion that the water underneath Aspen is hot enough to produce geothermal energy, and open up the possibility of launching a cheap clean and renewable powered heating district. A large jack-up drilling rig will plumb a new well in federal waters south of Little Lagoon and Gulf Shore starting this week, said officials with Apache Corporation. The drilling rig is in transit across the Gulf and could arrive off Alabama's coast as early as today. A company has halted Marcellus drilling in one northwestern Pennsylvania town after a kind of clay used to expedite the process spilled into a local reservoir. Hunt Marcellus Operating Company tells the Bradford era that it stopped drilling in Johnsonburg after some bentonite gel was released into Silver Creek and made its way into a drinking water reservoir controlled by the Johnsonburg Municipal Authority. The Des Plaines River near Lamont, Illinois, has taken on an unusually ruddy hue this week, due to a red dye that scientists have begun pouring in the water, apparently as part of a study to see where water from the Des Plaines River may by moving into the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal, possibly creating an avenue for Asian carp eggs, larval and other invasive species to migrate to Lake Michigan. At least 12 people have been attacked by piranhas on a beach in western Brazil, Globo News reported, in the very first piranha attacks recorded in the area, like something out of a horror movie. Brazilian authorities said the swimmers were attacked at Deveron Beach in the western city of Caceres. The Pentagon on Thursday held a successful test flight of a flying bomb that travels faster than the speed of sound and will give military planners the ability to strike targets anywhere in the world in less than an hour. Launched by rocket from Hawaii at 11.30 GMT, the Advanced Hypersonic Weapon, or AHW, glided through the upper atmosphere over the Pacific at hypersonic speed before hitting its target on the Kwajalein Atoll in the Marshall Islands, a Pentagon statement said. A slow-moving landslide that is causing a coastal bluff in San Pedro to buckle and fall into the ocean is starting to speed up. In the last two weeks, the Earth along an oceanfront road has shifted downward by more than two and a half feet and is tilting toward the sea, accelerating from half an inch to four inches a day. Los Angeles Department of Public Works officials said Wednesday. Just posted to CBC News Twitter feed, a cop is charged after teen is pepper sprayed in Peterborough, Ontario. Officer is charged with assault with weapon involving girl age 16. An Idaho man accused of firing two shots at the White House last week has been charged with attempting to assassinate President Barack Obama or his staff. Oscar Ramiro Ortega Hernandez of Idaho Falls, Idaho, made his first court appearance before a federal magistrate in Pittsburgh on Thursday, one day after he was arrested at a western Pennsylvania hotel. Presidential candidate Herman Cain will receive protection from the United States Secret Service, a source in federal law enforcement and two other sources told CNN. Not content to spy on people using street cameras, the small city of Lancaster, California, approved a crime-fighting spy plane to fly overhead. Instead of being deployed only in response to specific incidents or needs, as most police aircraft is used, 
the plane would be dispatched for general purpose surveillance, regardless of whether there's any suspicion of a crime being committed. Amid pressure from activists, Johnson Johnson said Wednesday that it is continuing efforts to remove traces of two harmful chemicals from its baby products around the world. An international coalition of consumer and environmental groups has been pressing J&J since May 2009 to remove two potentially cancer-causing chemicals from products including its signature Johnson's Baby Shampoo, long advertised under the slogan No More Tears. The European Union on Monday prohibited the use of X-ray body scanners in European airports, parting ways with the U.S. Transportation Security Administration, which has deployed hundreds of the scanners as a way to screen millions of airline passengers. European countries will be allowed to use an alternative body scanner, on that relies on radio frequency waves, which have not been linked to cancer. Thousands were still without power Thursday across the southeast after severe storms tore through seven states. Preliminary reports indicate at least 25 twisters hit southern states between Tuesday and Wednesday. Reports came from Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia and the Carolinas. Some 3,800 Fort Bliss troops have descended upon White Sands Missile Range with orders to carry out a massive test of cutting-edge technology that could soon find its way into the hands of American soldiers on the battlefield. The devices apparently include smartphones to monitor soldiers' positions, map out areas or locations of the enemy and send real-time reports to higher-ups. Homeland Security agents and township utilities staff today are reviewing more than 15 apparent attacks on local water and sewage facilities since summer that, in some instances, shut down water service and caused sewage overflows into the street, according to the system staff. OK, friends. Occurrences like this have happened in quite a few places since the beginning of the year. A wall collapsing in Binghamton, and sending sewage into river. A 1.9 million gallon sewage spill on a beach in San Diego, and the list goes on. A Scroogle.org search will garner many results for you to decipher. After reviewing the death of famed actress Natalie Wood Wagner in 1981, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department ruled it accidental. Now authorities are reopening the case, according to an announcement from the department issued late Thursday afternoon. The actress drowned on November 29, 1981 while boating off Catalina Island with her husband Robert Wagner and actor Christopher Walken. Natalie Wood appeared in more than 56 movies and became a child star at age 4 in playing the role of Susan Walker in Miracle on 34th Street. On Tuesday, the FBI was once again inside the East Haven Police Department seemingly gathering evidence in the agency's investigation into allegations that some officers were racially profiling the town's Latino residents. Hundreds of California State University faculty members staged a one-day strike on Thursday at campuses in East Bay and Dominguez Hills to protest a decision not to pay negotiated raises. The strike came after the Board of Trustees voted to raise tuition 9% next fall during a meeting that was disrupted by a confrontation between protesters and the police. Four protesters were arrested. Turns out that sharks are disappearing all over the Gulf. Elite-controlled CBS reports that Florida seeks poachers and fishermen and is ordering a ban on fishing for certain sharks. Occupy Wall Street protesters clogged streets and tied up traffic around the U.S. on Thursday to mark two months since the movement's birth and signal they aren't ready to quit, despite the breakup of many of their encampments by police. Nearly 400 people were arrested, most of them in New York. Brazilian federal police have opened a probe into U.S. oil giant Chevron over alleged pollution linked to an oil spill at its offshore freight project a leak that an environmental group alleges is far bigger than the company has stated. Fabio Sclear, who heads the Federal Police's Division of Environment and Historical Patrimony, said evidence showed Chevron's drilling went about 500 meters beyond permit.
Information provided by Chevron to the police does not match what police saw upon a visit to the site, he added. September 11, 2001 The day our country was hijacked and a permanent war was launched that will not end in our lifetime unless we the 99% stop it. Ten years later the war on terrorism has diverted trillions of dollars from more important uses and sunken our country into debt. Building 7, which most people don't know about, came crashing to the ground at 5.20 p.m. on September 11. Today, millions of citizens and 1,600 courageous architects and engineers are demanding an investigation into the suspect destruction of the skyscraper. The government's absurd story that normal office fires felled this 47-story skyscraper is only the tip of the iceberg of the anomalies and inconsistencies we've been given about September 11. Today we are taking our country back. We will not rest until those responsible for the death of 3,000 innocent people on September 11th are brought to justice, and the war dollars are brought home. This Saturday and Sunday, meet at Liberty Plaza. Researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology have designed a computer chip that mimics how the brain's neurons adapt in response to new information. Such chips could eventually enable communication between artificially created body parts and the brain. It could also pave the way for artificial intelligence devices. The benefit of long-term observations from orbit became evident on Thursday with the release of images from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter showing the subtly shifting motion of large sand dunes on the red planet, proving that the surface of Mars is much more dynamic than previously believed. This is the Moon, but not as we know it. NASA's new topographic map of the Moon lets us Earth-bound critters get a better sense of the Moon's features. The impressive map which was created in part by a team of astronomers from Arizona State University, uses data from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or the LRO spacecraft. It's said to be the highest resolution, near global topographic image of our lunar satellite to ever exist. A so-called Community Awareness Program CAP has been launched by the Counterterrorism Education Learning Lab, or, the CELL, a non-profit group directly linked to the Department of Homeland Security. The cell is the same group behind the absurdist fear-mongering video entitled Recognizing the Eight Signs of Terrorism which is nothing more than a clear attempt to strike illogical fear into the hearts of Americans. President Obama's position regarding the NYPD's raid of Zuccotti Park is that every municipality has to make its own decision about how to handle the issues of free speech and the concerns of the community. But according to Rick Ellis at The Examiner, a Justice Department official says that the recent evictions of Occupy movement across the country including Salt Lake City, Denver, Portland, Oakland, and New York City were coordinated with help from Homeland Security, the FBI and other federal police agencies. Much like the last meteor shower of about a week ago, the Taurids, the moon will make it hard to see the Leonids that peaked Thursday night and Friday morning. On average, there will be about 10-15 meteors every hour overnight. The Leonids seem to run on a cycle of the shower being very active every 33 to 34 years or so. It's one of the biggest things in the entire solar system. A dark filament of magnetism measuring more than 800,000 kilometers from end to end is sprawled diagonally across the face of the Sun. NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory took an ultraviolet picture of the structure during the late hours of November 17. Also, China's unmanned Shenzhou 8 probe returned to Earth on November 17, wrapping up a three-week mission to the Tiangong-1 space station. The volcanic tremor measured at El Hierro remains at very high levels and in sharp contrast to visible activity, feeding speculations and fear about new volcanic vents opening up somewhere on or near the island. Some fear such a new vent could be located in the El Golfo Bay, near Frontera, since most of the deep earthquakes in recent days are concentrated beneath the northern sector of the island. 